to it. Uh, Julia, your thoughts on the session in the end, closing up about seven points. Not much of a movement on the Australian market, but a good movement uh, given the, the type of moves that we saw in overnight markets, and that is the sh uh, small sell that we saw in the US markets. Markets did seem to be trending water in the morning. However, coming into the afternoon, we saw a clear sector rotation from some of those defensive areas into the resources. And if we have a look at the banks in particular, they have been very much in focus. Uh, we've seen them trading in a range of between one. 1.4 to 1.8 times book value and at the moment we're seeing banks at the top of that range so it does look like a lot of investment houses coming out to reduce their ratings on the big four banks they have done well because of that chase for yield that we've seen coming through given the macro conditions on the market at the moment in fact in the last month we've seen the big four banks gaining four percent in the last quarter eight percent and in the last year we've seen them gaining a massive 19 percent but today we've seen some downgrades coming through Commonwealth Bank we've seen new Mura reducing it to a neutral, Deutsche Bank reducing it to a hold, NAB, uh, we've seen Citigroup coming out and putting a neutral rating on uh, NAB and we've also seen um, that rotation into resources. So BHP has been up by 1% and Fortescue up by a whopping 5.3% today. Julia, I wanted to get your thoughts. Obviously discussing throughout the day, it seems now for the last couple of weeks, all eyes very much on tonight's ECB uh, meeting and, and expectations keep up and down as to what we're going to hear from uh, Mr Draghi. Interesting, some... Uh, some little notes, breakers, if you like, coming out on Reuters. The Italian Prime Minister Mario Monti, Monti saying strongly he is strongly in favour of joint euro bonds but knows this is possible only when other steps have been taken. We know many of these peripheral nations very, very keen on them. We know some of them in the likes of Germany aren't keen on it. But again, sets the scene for a very important meeting tonight. Absolutely. And the market's expecting to see at a minimum uh, bond buying by the ECB. So a revival of that securities markets program, the S&P program to buy bonds of both Italian and Sp Spanish uh, bonds to bring down those yields there. The market I don't think is expecting to see euro bonds as yet and that's because the political will isn't there. So really what we're watching for from today's meeting and the announcement by Mario Draghi is a band-aid solution until the there is a political will, especially by Germany, uh, for our physical union. So uh, that's euro bonds. So the market is hoping to see a little bit more than, I guess, bond buying. Hopefully, um, some unconventional measures like another LTRO, the long term refinancing operations, or something of the like. But really, a short term band aid uh, program is what's expected by the market and to, to give the euro, Eurozone some time to put together a longer term solution to the mm. problems that it has. So um, all eyes on the ECB. You know, Mario Draghi had some pretty big words to say last week, and really we're watching to see whether that's Were they a bit foolish, Julia? Well, I mean, has it, in, in light of, of the pressure it's put on him and the ECB, the idea of, look, guys, don't worry, whatever I come out, whatever happens, look, it's going to be big. I mean, it just seems, you know, I'm paraphrasing to a certain degree here, but <laughs> I mean, it seems remarkable sort of rhetoric. It seems pretty amazing in that whole speech there were, there were three or four words which the market really concentrated on and I guess it's quite amazing to see a central banker come out with uh, words such as do whatever is needed to mm. support the euro and so the market is expecting to see some pretty um, big measures to be announced tonight but of course you know the FOMC there was a lot built into that meeting as well and the market was quite disappointed there but really seemed to shrug it off and I guess the expectations for the ECB well the expectations aren't too much at all. Society General released a survey uh, that it did of its institutional clients and 69% are expecting to be disappointed by the ECB meeting and any measures that are announced tonight. So I guess going into it, the market is hoping to see some concrete actions, but in terms of expectations, given the past history of what we've expected and received from the ECB, there's not a lot of expectation going into this ECB meeting. Yes. Look, look, do we see much of an impact in terms of the market, the Aussie dollar? Uh, an impact in terms of the Aussie dollar, not so much in terms of the retailers, and that was a little bit disappointing. So retail sales did come ahead of expectations, up by 1%, and I guess that's understandable given some of the uh, government payments that we're seeing in terms of the carbon tax as well as student assistance. We've seen a number of interest rate cuts now, 125 basis points, so that seems to be flowing through as well. But I guess the big test is to see whether this is a blip because of those government assistance packages or whether this is a sustainable trend, and really that's what the market's looking 
looking towards. Also, we've seen the biggest IPO of 2012 so far debuting on the market. Unfortunately, it hasn't been so good. Calibers come online today and the stock ending down by 8%, but it does look like mining services companies in general have been under pressure. We've seen stocks like Monodelphus also losing around about 3% today. Julia, just on that, and quickly, as you say, maybe caught up with some of the, I suppose, the the pressure we saw on that mining services space but no doubt there are a lot of been other companies bankers and so forth thinking about going to market do you, in terms of listing do you think they'd have been taking much out of today's performance today's debut I think you could uh, say that Calibre has almost been a test case for the market yeah. to see how it goes. I mean, the last uh, IPO that we saw on the market, um, the last biggest IPO that we saw on the market in 2012, I think the share price of that particular stock's around about half since it's actually hit the market. So it is a difficult environment. We know that volumes have been under pressure and IPOs, we haven't seen many coming to the market. So Calibre's uh, the biggest that we've seen for 2012 so far. They raised $75 million worth of capital. We'll still see First Reserve retaining 60% ownership and we know that this IPO has been scoured back uh, from the initial amounts that they were looking for and if we have a look at the trading in Calibre today this is what it looks like and uh, if I just bring up an intraday chart of Calibre I've just got it on top and just to compare it to another mining services company just to show that it isn't just uh, the fact that it was IPOing and any negative sentiment around it that dragged down the share price I've got Monodelphus down the bottom intraday and if I put the two together you can see that Monodelphus also came under a bit of pressure in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. Calibre at the end of the day down by about 8%. Monodelphus was down by about 3.6%. We also saw mining services companies like Deckmill as well as NRW coming under pressure. So I guess a difficult week for mining services given the attention that we have uh, had on capital expenditure plans for a lot of the big mining gi giants. And Anglo came out uh, this week and slashed its cap CapEx budget for 2012 from $7 billion to $5.4 billion. Um, but I guess 8% is a pretty steep fall, so a bit of disappointment at uh, Calibre's debut today.